Okay, in this video we're taking a look at the Hollybro Kakute F7 stack. Uh, this is the flight controller, the Adlatl V2 video transmitter, and uh, their 4-in-1 32-bit ESC. Uh, obviously, uh, it, these parts do come sold separately as well, so I'll put uh, links to all of the various parts, the complete stack, as well as the individual pieces that you can get if you want to buy these components. Uh, this here came as a set. It was actually... Um, uh, shrink wrapped together like this, but obviously you can buy all these separately. And we're just going to take a look at this in this video. Um, this will go into a build in a future video. Okay, so the one box here on the left here has the video transmitter and the F7 flight controller. And just has a little QR code there for the manual. You can go to the product um, link in the description and there will be a link there to get the manual if you want to see that. It has the wiring diagram for the flight controller and also the manual for the video transmitter. And then the other box here has the 4-in-1 uh, ESC. This is a 32-bit ESC, D-Shot 1200 capable, uh, 65 amps continuous with 80 amps burst. And it has a current sensor on board and ESC telemetry. And this is a very, you know, like all Hollybird stuff, very nicely laid out and this looks really really nice just these metal mosfets here a little bit of a they got a smaller current sensor there um, pretty big pads for the battery leads and also for all the motor wires on the top side so this is i think this is going to be the top this is motor one over here motor two motor three and motor four and then uh no uh, no solder connections on the underside and you have a huge row of capacitors there for cleaning up um, noise and then you have your wiring limb connection here it goes to your flight controller. So the ESC is uh, 2 to 6S capable, it does not do 8S. It does come with these other accessories here, you get a little nylon M3 standoffs for mounting and then it does come with a, uh, looks like a low ESR capacitor. 35 volts, 470 microfarads. And then this uh, looks like yeah, I have a couple of different wiring looms here for connecting to your flight controller. Yeah, so it looks like uh, these are probably going to be the same, just two different lengths. I guess if you are having a, a build where you need the wiring loom to be longer, then this is nice. But if it's stacked around top of each other, the shorter one is probably the one you're going to want to use. Okay, so here's what's in the other box. They got the a video transmitter and the flight controller and some wires here. This little wiring loom goes to the video transmitter. It plugs in here and I think the other end has some beer wires. You're going to solder that to the flight controller. Uh, it does come with the uh, little brass nuts for the uh, SMA adapter and this is uh, yeah, it's SMA for your SMA antennas and this connects to the MMCX connector that's on the video transmitter. It's pretty typical what you get these days. And then you get a spare set of foam and ribbon cable here for the IMU or the gyro. And that's going to be sitting on a little pad there on top of the flight controller. It's, you can't quite see it here, but um, I'm going to go ahead and take this apart. It looks like it comes pre-assembled like this, but yeah, if you're going to be doing any soldering to some of these connectors here, you're going to have to take this apart. So Take a look at uh, this after I take it apart. Okay, so take a look at the uh, video transmitter here first. This is the um, version 2.3 of the uh, video transmitter. So they obviously are making updates to this as, as things move along. Um, yeah, this one does up to 800 milliwatts. It's smart audio capable, so uh, BTX remote control. It's uh, pit mode at, at half a milliwatt, uh, 25 milliwatts, 200 milliwatts. 400 milliwatts and 800 milliwatts. A button here for changing your bands and channels if you want to use the onboard LEDs here. They're at the bottom of the board here. So you got your bands here, or channels one through eight, and then you got your bands A, B, E, F, and R. And these lights here, you got a little microphone, it does re record audio, sound from the drone, and I see a connector there. And then this is where you're gonna connect up your your wiring loom here and I think that's going to be just four four cables you get your red wire which is going to be your battery voltage blackest ground 
yellow is video and the blue is going to be for your smart audio. Okay, so here's a look at the F7 flight controller. You got your gyro there. The uh, This is a 32K gyro uh, sitting on a little vibration dampening uh, soft mount here. This is uh, going to keep uh, reduce um, noise getting into the gyro. Uh, it does have a 5 volt, 2 amp voltage regulator on board. This here is your boot button for, for bootloader mode. It's pretty big. Um, all of these are uh, silk screen, all the connection points. And I'm not sure if my camera will focus on this, but it's very small. But you can kind of make out what these are saying. So at the very top here, you got your connections for your camera, you got your ground, 5 volts, and your video in. And then your video transmitter is going to connect over here. You have ground here on the left, battery voltage. Um, I think R, that's RS, RSSI there, and then this is video out to the video transmitter. So these three wires here are going to go to that one, to the wiring harness here that goes to the video transmitter. And then the, the last blue wire is probably going to go to one of your transmit pins here on one of the UARTs. Um, and you've got a bunch of them here. you got uh, R1, T1, so that's uh, UART1, and then UART2, 3, 4, and six, and I think there's a UART seven here somewhere as well. So there's supposedly six UARTs, and all of them can be used at the same time. Okay, so down here it says NC. It's kind of hard to read. I'm not sure what that's for. You got five volts here, ground, and 3.3 volts for spectrum. And down at the bottom here, you have motors um, output five and six. If you have if you have an octocopter, you have ground here SD SCL. This is for compass. Get your buzzer connection here and five volts and LED and ground. If you want to connect up the buzzer and LED, you can connect it down here. And of course here you got your connection that's going to go to your four and AC. You got your four motor outputs, uh, ESC telemetry and your battery voltage and ground. That's going to be on the wiring loom that I showed earlier. And just connect that to here and then the other one goes to the four and AC. Okay, so this is the underside of the board, and there's no silk screening here, so all of your connections can be made on the top of the board, so that's good. Got your OSD chip here, got your extremely large F7 chip, and then you have a slot here for your micro SD card if you want to do black box recording. This one will let you do that as well. Okay, so I'm going to measure the uh, power output here of the video transmitter with the Immersion RC RF power meter and I'm on FatTrack 4, 1500 megahertz, and 25 milliwatts and it is reading about 36 and a half milliwatts so above what they're saying and let's go to the next power setting which is going to be uh, 200 milliwatts and it's reading just about 200 milliwatts and we'll go to the next one, which should be 500 milliwatts. And we're reading about 390, so it should be more like 400, not 500. And then we'll go to the next one. Uh, this should be 800 milliwatts, and it is reading about 466 milliwatts, so quite a bit lower there. Go back to 25 milliwatts, and we're at 29 milliwatts now. So I think as it warms up, the milliwatt rating is going to go down a little bit. 200 milliwatts is 170 milliwatts, and then 500 is 366, and then 800 is 460, 450. It's kind of coming, it's coming down a little bit as it warms up, and yeah, the, the video transmit is getting a bit warm. Okay, I'm going to take some additional measurements here on a different frequency. I am now at uh, measuring at 5700 or 5.7 gigahertz and this is going to be uh, transmitting on the E band uh, channel 1 which is 5705 at 25 milliwatts and so at 25 milliwatts is reading 38 milliwatts on this band and 200 milliwatts is reading 206 milliwatts 500 milliwatts is reading 375 milliwatts and 800 milliwatts is reading 400 and 39 milliwatts. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, measure on 5900 megahertz. So the closest one 
would be the E band on channel 6, which is 5905. And on 25 milliwatts, it is reading about 24.6 milliwatts. Switching over to 200 milliwatts, it's now reading 140 milliwatts. And at uh, 500 milliwatts, it's reading about 345 milliwatts. And 800 milliwatts is about 480. Uh, and falling 177 milliwatts. So yeah, uh, it's pretty warm at 800 milliwatts. So take that back down to 25 milliwatts, and now you can see it's reading about 20 milliwatts. So the reading varies based on the uh, frequency it's uh, transmitting on. So I, I tried it at 5700 megahertz, 5800 megahertz, and 5900 megahertz. So I should cover a fairly decent um, uh, width of the band. Um, yeah, obviously, you probably if you want to get more accurate readings, you got to pretty much check every channel. But yeah, this video would be extremely long if I did that. I just want to give you sort of a, an idea of what this video transmitter is going to be outputting at uh, based on the readings from this RF meter at these various frequencies. So hopefully this is helpful.